just realize just exactly what Brother Michael just said in Jesus' holy, holy name, how holy it really is. And you know, Easter is here, and every day ought to be Easter. St. John's Gospel Chapter 1, verse 1. And as we look at this tonight, I want you to think about things, things. Now what comes to mind tonight in the next little bit, 45 minutes or less, I'm going to lay this ticker right here. I don't normally do this. But these folks have been here all evening. But as we begin this tonight, I want you to think about things concerning him self just things concerning him things concerning him what would you think of things concerning him and As we begin to think about this, there's one God and one way to Him. There's just one way to God. And as we begin to look at this, as I sit down today, and I begin to I begin to look at this. Now, Easter, now this coming Sunday. Spring forward, you set you set your clocks up. One hour. All right, but when the when you think about now God God leaving leaving heaven, God in the form of man. Now you think about it. I want you to get your, get the mindset about him, him himself. Boy, I'll tell you, it's hard. It's going to be hard. But you said in the beginning, where was the beginning? Anywhere God wanted it to be. God is everywhere and nowhere. Absent is he. He's omnipresent. He is everywhere present. You say you believe that preacher? Every bit of it. He's in Japan, China, Asia Minor, Turkey, Czechoslovakia. He is everywhere tonight just like he's in this chapel right now. He's right here. How do I know it? I brought him. I brought him. He came with me. He made me a promise when he saved me. But he said, in the beginning was, was the word. As far as the beginning was, we have a record in the book of Genesis. I won't turn there, won't ask you to, but he said, let us 
make man. Let us. Christ. The Holy Ghost. And God Almighty. The Trinity. Made man. In their image. Okay. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. All right. So God, we know the, the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And the Word is God. And we have the Word. We have it. All right. Verse number two. I'm just going to read five verses. And the same was what in the beginning with God. All right. The beginning could be anywhere. God is omnipresent, omni-absent. He is everywhere. All right. We've established that. All things, A-double-L. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. All right, past tense. Was life. Also is life. All right, from past to present. All right, and it said, and the life was the light of men. It was was the light of men and still is. All right. Verse number five. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. All right. Because he is the light. And darkness cannot stand light. Because when you shine light into darkness, then darkness is no more. Darkness has to flee when you turn the light on. It's gone. It's gone. All right, number one. Number one. This is my little bowl that I'm mixing up. Now you can add, you can put your remedy in your batter. All right. Then God humbled himself. Things, things concerning himself. First of all, he humbled himself. In the beginning, God humbled himself. He humbled himself and he said, Father, I'll go. I'll go. God needed a sacrifice. But yet he didn't need it. He could have made everything right another way, but he needed a blood sacrifice. He needed blood for blood, but he needed a perfect blood because man had shed his hands upon God's creation and tried to cover his sins himself. He had shed he had cut leaves. He had cut down God's creation. But then he went a little farther and he shed blood. He killed an animal, an innocent animal that had never harmed nothing, had never done nothing. So he needed a perfect sacrifice in order to replace what had been done there in the Garden of Eden. So God put them out and put up warriors at the gate and said, you're not getting back in till my, till something, till you or some Someone has humbled themselves or they have placed themselves in place of what you did. They have got to humble themselves and become the sacrifice. They've got to become humble and 
They've got to be the perfect sacrifice, but it's got to be human. I'll go. And he did. Thank God he humbled himself. And see, God wants you to humble yourself. Let's go to Philippians 2.8. And look what the Bible says. And as I begin to look at this in Philippians 2.8, the Bible says something here that I thought was maybe appropriate. You, you've got hundreds of other places you could have, I, I could have went, no doubt. And being found in the fashion as a man. He humbled himself. He humbled himself. He didn't, he didn't have to be humbled. He didn't have to be brought down with a whip or with something else. But he said, and he became obedient unto death. Even the death of the cross. Something that you cannot bear alone. You have to, you can't bear it. Oh, dear God. Something that you've got to have some help with. You can't, you got to bear it. Simon the Cyrenian, did he not help him carry it? He helped him carry that cross, but oh, dear God, was he not beaten? Was his flesh not torn? Oh, oh, folks, oh, dear God. Mm. Oh, dear God, was uh, not the flesh torn from his body? But he said, you don't take my life. I lay it down and I lay it down freely. I'm humbling myself. I'm being obedient unto death. I'm humbling myself. Because I want to do my Father's will. I want to do it. He, may, he didn't say that. I'm paraphrasing. But the thing about it was, He did it for me. He did it because I was lost and I was undone without God. He humbled Himself because there was no other way for me to get to Him. I couldn't get out of here. I couldn't leave this world and there's no way for me to get to Him. Number two, He committed Himself. He made a commitment unto God Almighty. He made a commitment to do this. And how many folks do you know that have made commitments and where are they at? Where are they at? And the thing is in First Peter Chapter 2 and verse number 23. And I looked at this and I'm going to kind of hurry through it in order to cover all of it that I could stir up. And in First Peter chapter 2 and verse number 23, and he said, Who, when he was reviled, or... Uh, when they beat him there, when they had done all of this to him, he reviled not again. He didn't, he didn't go, he didn't say them. He had made a commitment to his father. See, this hand is part of my body. And when you, your hand slips and drops a hammer, and it mashes your toe, you don't turn loose and start smacking your hand, do you? 
or you don't fire up and beat the far out of your toe. See, his father and him were one. But it said when he was reviled, he re, uh, reviled, or he he didn't do it. He didn't didn't jump on him again. He didn't do it not again. But when he suffered, he threatened not. He didn't threaten them. Why? Because they were his creation. They was his creation. And they, they that beat him, he was, he had committed and he had humbled himself to come and save the very ones that was doing this to him. And what I did before I was saved, I did to him. And he said here, and he threatened not, but committed himself. He committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. He had committed himself to the Father. He had committed himself to God Almighty. Father, I'm going through with this. I'm going through with it. I'm going to drive that nail all the way down. I'm going to drive that nail all the way down and I'm going to build this house. I'm going to the cross. I'm not quitting. And I'm going to do it right. Because if I don't, Dean's going to hell. I'm committed. Because I said I'll go. And I've humbled myself to the cross. And I'm committed to the trip. I'm committed to go through to it. And not only had he done that. But he offered himself. Number three. He didn't offer nobody else. Well I'll tell you what. I've committed myself. I've humbled myself, I'm committed myself, and I'm offering myself for Dean. Father, I'm going to offer myself for all the lost. I'm going to offer myself for all of them. God didn't say, hey, you can't do it. Now, wait a minute. You, you, you have humbled yourself and you've committed yourself, now you're offering yourself for everybody. God didn't say you couldn't do it. He said, I'm going to offer myself for all the sins of the world. Look what he said in Hebrews 9, 14. Hebrews 9, 14, and the Bible says this. In 9, 14, how much more shall the blood of Jesus who through the eternal spirit offered himself. He offered himself without spot to God. He didn't offer it to another man. He didn't offer it to another person. He didn't offer to buy it from a store. He didn't offer to buy it back from nobody else, but he offered it to God Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Amen. Brother, I'll tell you right now. Brother, how can a person quit on God? When God said, God the Son said, I am I'm giving my eternal everything for you. Because I have made myself an offering to God. Have you done that? To purge your sin. To clean you up.
from the inside out. God didn't clean you from the outside in. God cleansed you from the inside out. And the thing about it is, He gave, number four, now listen to me, He gave Himself. Well, boy, this road's getting a little rough. I believe I'll send the Holy Ghost in. I think I'll, I'll see if I can, Father, uh, God, can you just let me kind of slack up a little bit? <laughs> the load's getting a little bit heavy. I mean, <laughs> uh, this thing's a little bit lopsided. But he gave himself. In Galatians 1 4. Galatians 1 4. Now look what he said. And then Galatians 2.20. Galatians 1.4, the Bible says, who, now listen, who gave himself. Now this is what I'm talking about. He gave himself for our sins. Have you gave, have you gave yourself completely to God? Now, have you, have you gave yourself to Him? Just like you are. Not adding to, not taking from, but just add, just, just exactly like you are. Say, God, I'm a sinner. I have stole, I have lied, I have cheated, I've done this, I've done that, whatever. I, just, just like you are. Just say, God, I've done, I'm, this is who I am. God, forgive me. Just don't make an excuse for nothing. Just face it. When you go home, do this. Just try it. Don't close your eyes. Closing your eyes is for a coward. Get you a mirror and get down on your knees. And get right over top of that mirror and look at that nut in that mirror. That's me. And say, Lord, this is me again, Lord. And I'm looking at the one that's talking to you. And God, you know exactly who I am. And I do too. And Lord, you know who what I'm guilty of. And God, don't let me hide nothing. And God, I'm going to go over these things. You don't have to talk out loud. I can tell you about a man who did. His wife liked to beat his eyes out. And I can take you to his house tonight. And he'll tell you all about it. You know what this preacher done? This preacher told him, said, Confess your sins, your faults, one to another. And they walked to church that night. I, I laid brick for this person and done it for a long time. And they walked it back home and he said, Honey, I've got to confess to you. He started confessing. And he had done this and he had done that and he had run around and he had done this and that and other. Boy, she cut loose and beat the living fool out of him. She threw rocks at him, Jake, all the way home. He told me about it. He said, preacher, I should never have listened to that preacher. I said, amen, brother. 
I said, the Word of God said, confess your faults, but you confess them to God. Buddy, I, don't you go, listen, man can't do a thing about forgiving your sin. Amen. But God said right here, who, for, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. God will forgive your sin and deliver you and God will clean your house. All right? And he said, according to the will of God our Father. All right? Look in chapter 2 of the same book in verse number 20. And the Bible said, Now I am crucified. What did Paul say? He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Now, Christ is not a liar, is he? But if Christ don't sin, does he? So if Christ lives in me, brother, I don't want my wife beating a fool out of me. All right? He said, Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who lived in me, who, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Amen. Listen, brother, what I'm saying, brother, I mean, I ain't got nothing to hide from her or nobody else, but the thing about it is, Brother, listen, you confess your sin to God. Brother, a priest or nobody else can't cover your sin. I don't confess to a mama that, or a papa that dresses like a mama. All right. But he pleased, number five, listen. He pleased not himself. He didn't please himself. Brother, listen. He said the birds have nests, the foxes have dens, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. No place. All right? In Romans chapter 15 and verse number 3, listen to what the Word of God says. He didn't, he didn't want to please himself, but he wanted to please the Father. But he said in Romans 15, now listen to what it said in verse number 3. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. See, he wanted to please the Father. He didn't want to please himself. He went to fulfill the law of God and to die the death of the cross. He knew how he was going to die because he was God. And there's nothing new under the sun. God knew everything from the beginning, and he knows everything to the end. But still, he loved you enough to do it. Amen. We're talking about everything concerning himself. All right? We're getting close. Glorified? He didn't glorify himself. He glorified not himself. He glorified not himself. Point number six, Hebrews chapter five and verse number five. Now listen to what he is saying here. Hebrews chapter five, now in verse number five. And the Bible says this, So also Christ glorified not himself. Glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today 
have I begotten thee. Brother, he was God's son. He was God's son. He glorified not, he didn't glorify in nothing on this earth. He was only here for 31 or 2 years. I don't know exactly how long he is here. Maybe somebody does. There are a whole lot of people a whole lot smarter than me. But the thing about it is, there ain't nobody no more saved than I am. Amen. Boy, I know where I'm going. And I know in whom I have believed. And I know he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Whoo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Last point. And I am in this. He cannot. I like this. I had to come up with something because I had to have seven of them. <laughs> what would be your last point? Things concerning himself. He cannot deny himself. He cannot deny himself. He cannot deny who he is. At the end, at the end, at no point, at the beginning, whom do men say that I am? Whom do you say that I am? Yeah. But the thing about it, 2 Timothy 2.13. 2 Timothy 2.13. And the word of God says this. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. I want you to mark that in your Bible when you go soul winning. Would you do that for me, please? If you go out and you talk to somebody and uh, and uh, they just simply will not accept you. And they just simply will not turn loose and just will not. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ and just say, well, you can take the Word of God and you can do what you want to with it, but uh, and I just try to tell them that, you know, that God loves them without and I tell them Second Timothy chapter 1 verse number 12 this is my verse for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. For I know in whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I know he's able. I know he's able. I know he's able to keep that which I have Committed unto Him. How do you know that preacher? How do you know? Because He's God. Well I don't believe. I just don't believe. There's a God that can do something like that. And I just simply tell them. In 2 Timothy 2.13. 2, I say, friend, I love you and God loves you, but can I read you a verse of Scripture in 2 Timothy 2.13? 
If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. He's still God. And he still loves you. He's still God and he still loves you. And I still love you and you can't you can't deny that and you can't stop me from loving you. And you can't stop God from loving you. And you can't stop God from being God. So why not just give in? Why not just give in? Preacher, just would you just tell me why I need to hold out or why I must just give in? And that's when you get that open door. In Revelations 3, 17, 18, and 19, I stand at the door and knock. Oh, would you just open? Would you just open the door and I'll come in and sup with you if you will just sup with me? Would you just drink with me just a little while? Would you just have a soda with me? Would you do that? Yeah, preacher, I believe I will. I believe I will. If God, if God, if He's that kind of God and He won't deny Himself and He just wants to come in and love me that much and He died for me, I believe I'll just invite Him in. You can catch a lot of folks with the love of God because he won't deny himself. He just simply says, if we believe not, yet he abides faithful. He abides still faithful. Let's stand. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to tell you I love you. Lord, I just want to tell you that I care. Lord, I just want to tell you, God, that, Lord, I just want to thank you. God, that, Lord, I don't know if you're sitting down, standing up, or what you did that day, but Lord, you, you just volunteered and humbled yourself and said, I love Dean enough that I'll die for him. And God, I just can't thank you enough. Oh, precious God, don't let one, Lord, not just one, don't let even one from the pews of this precious little church die lost without God. Oh, God, as I've come here in the night, Lord, and tried to pray over the pews where people would sit. God, I beg for their souls, and tonight again, Lord, I beg for their souls. But God, you died for their souls. Oh, precious God, God, fill these empty pews, please, precious Lamb of God. Oh, God, send a sinless offering, His darling Son. Oh, precious God, do take care of each one. Protect them, and Lord, fulfill their every desire in the will of God. Lord, save their children their grandchildren, Lord, their great-grandchildren. Lord, just save their families. 
Watch over them, Lord, and grant them health, wealth, and stability. Lord, just fill their tummies and their hearts desire in the will of God. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Oh, in that precious, precious name, in Jesus, Jesus, Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.